party. I have to rearrange my whole life to do this. Hi friends. We're gonna make the American Duchess wrap cape. Uh, we're gonna make one for me and we're gonna make one for my husband because clothing has no gender and this is gonna be fun. I am at my in-laws and I have never drafted up a pattern like this before. Working in the costume shop in high school, I often was given like a student's measurements and some fabric and told to make them a circle skirt, a poodle skirt, a blouse, a vest, whatever. Um, but I've never done anything like this where I take um, a thing like this and make it a real pattern. So I thought that I would film me doing that and talk a little bit about it so that we have some kind of frame of reference and um, for anyone else who might be interested in making, making this cape that doesn't have any experience doing this, I will be your guinea pig. Let's get started. Okay, so first I'm gonna count up all of these squares. All of these squares are an inch, and this pattern, um, according to the instructions, was made for a 38 inch bust, which is just about, it's a little bigger than my measurements, um, and it's way bigger than my husband's measurements. But I'm gonna start by counting up all of the squares. Hi, kiddo. Um, so I'm going to start by counting up all of the squares, because each square is one inch, as I've said. And then I'm going to trace it onto this butcher paper that I have, um, and make lines with my yardstick, which is on the chair, and you can't see it right now. So let's start there. Okay. Okay. Hi. Um, I counted up all of the things, and because there are curves. I have this handy dandy board thing um, that was a grandmother-in-law's and I think will be a, a great help to me. Um, so let's get started with the actual drafting. We're gonna start with the front um, wrap and the back and then here is the sleeve piece. And I think this one's going to be harder, so I'm going to save that for later. Do this in pencil. Um, I want a little, I want mine a little bit longer, so I'm actually going to add a few inches to the length. I've also seen from other people's videos that I watched for research that the, uh, I think the back is a little bit shorter than the side, so I'm going to add two inches to the um, back, three inches to the back, and one and two inches to the sides, <laughs> three to the back, two to the sides, because the back is shorter. It's also worth noting. This pattern is drafted without seam allowances, so don't forget to add a seam allowance on the actual fabric. So, I do this in pencil because I just realized that there's a curve, so um, this side is the straight side, obviously, so that's going to be against the edge of the butcher paper. Then this side is longer, so you can't start <laughs> just from the bottom. You have to add inches. Do your work in pencil, folks. Hi, KK. Hi. I'm being blessed. Kato and I are having a conversation. Can you sneeze? Won't that be fun for you?
to make my life a little bit easier, I just put little dots at all of the points I needed after I measured. So I put a little dot on either side of the center back fold, um, on either side of the shoulder seam, and then on both sides of the bottom of the back piece. Uh, and then I played a little bit of connect the dots. the hard part. So I have no idea how I'm going to do this. Um, you know, I guess let's start from the bottom, from the, and then go up. Here, kind of playing connect the dots. Um, I'm measuring over from the edge of my butcher paper where the center back of the pattern is over about 13 inches and making a little mark so I know that that's the edge of the pattern. And then from there I'm kind of eyeballing a little bit of a curve up. The curve is just about a half an inch. Um, so I, I did measure, but the actual curve itself I kind of eyeballed as um, best I could. So it's about six and a half inches across at its thinnest point, which is which is about three inches down. So I'm uh, eyeballing all of this. Don't. Friends, we're gonna make a mock up. I bought muslin expressly for this purpose. That's the finest point. Oh, jeez Louise. Jeez Louise. We're professionals here, folks. around a little bit more with the curve of this um, side back seam, making sure I hit the mark I'd made for the thinnest point of the shoulder seam. And then uh, as I connected the two dots I made between the top and bottom of this side seam, I kind of eyeballed it to make it look as much like the picture as possible. Um, so far, I think it's worked out fine. with this once I'm working my mock-up. What do you think, Kato? Yeah, I have roughly the same amount of faith in myself. Okay. Um, well, let's move on to the wrap 
part, this part, and we'll come back to this. <laughs> All right, friends, I am back. I watched Heather Byram's video on how she um, did this, and that was so unbelievably helpful that I'm going to link it in the description of this video. Um, but for now, we're going to get back to drafting the wrap bits um, and this, and then we'll move on to this later. Okay, let's go. All right, so the wrap piece is nine inches wide, so we're going to take our handy dandy yardstick and we're going to measure nine inches. So here is nine inches, and then we're gonna go this is this piece is flat on the bottom, so we don't have to worry about the problem we ran into last time. We're gonna start by going up the longest straight edge, and that is twenty-seven. So then it's 1.5 inches up. I'm sorry, not 5 point, not five inches up, 5 inches across. me at nine inches across. Okay, I have to admit I've heard from several people that sometimes the wrap pieces are not long enough to go around your body and then um, hook together. You might need a ribbon. And I have to admit I don't like bulk and I do a lot of sitting because I live in Manhattan so I have to take the subway. So I don't want anything that's gonna like dig into my back so I'm uh, I'm gonna start with this and when I make my mock-up I will let you know if I need to extend the wrap pieces so that they meet in the back all right next up is 22 inches. So here's our nine, and we're going to go up 22. Did you know that my dog has the stinkiest breath in the world? Oops, I'll, I'll have better pen. <laughs> For the darts, um, they're all about two and a half inches wide, so I'm going to go through and mark that off. And now Jasper's come to help. I'm just the pet magnet tonight, aren't I? Just kidding, they're all about two inches wide. To mark off the darts, I made a little mark on the bottom of the pattern piece, two, one for each side of the dart, positioned my yardstick in between those two dots, and found the apex. And then I gave myself some little diagonal helper guidelines. dart is 17.5 inches, the middle dart is 19.5 inches, and the tallest is 21.5 inches. Okay, so now I have this. I just have to do this part, which is right here. So the thinnest part, the skinniest part of this 
It's like mm, two, three, four, five. It's like five and a half inches. So we're gonna measure. Right here. So I'm gonna eyeball it and kind of This is 17.5, 19.5, and 21.5 inches. Now let's move on to the collar bits, and then we will do the cape and here we go. Okie dokie. So So let's start with the collar contrast because it's smaller. It is one, two, three, four, five, six inches across. So we're gonna put that right here. Get yourself a good pencil because this is a nightmare. It is three inches up. On the smaller side, half on this one. collar which is eight inches across and five inches up pardon me I have to rearrange my whole life to do this Five inches up on that side, and then uh, I'll say six on the other. Most of it. But uh, so the, I do is I did a straight line, but as you can see, there's a little curve. So I'm just gonna go back and. this part off. I would like to let you all know, I know that these are fabric scissors, but my husband used them to cut paper, and now they're paper scissors, and I used it as an excuse to buy better fabric scissors. Don't yell at me. Don't at me. I know these are supposed to be fabric scissors. some trouble. I just know. Let's get started, shall we? I'm 
Guys, I set my pencil down. I don't know where I put it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna, again, start by counting out things. I already kind of started, but I'm gonna go through and make little notes about the widest point and the smallest point and the tallest point. Um, just to make my life easier, because this is no straight lines, it's all curved. Um... And that makes me nervous. Oh, finally my goblin child emerges from upstairs. I have no idea where he's been. In the windowsill. All right, I'll be back. Here's six inches down, so ten inches from the top total. And we want about ten and a half inches. So we want eight and a half inches. That's right here. So eight inches. the drafting process was a lot of connect the dots. I basically turned my sleeve pattern into a grid. This was heavily uh, inspired by Heather Byron's video. Again, I, I'm going to link that in the description. I can't begin to say how helpful it was for me, but of course mine is a little bit different because I added some length. Basically what I did was draw a line from the tallest point down and then bisect that vertical line at several other points um, just to make sure that my measurements were all right. This is not a symmetrical sleeve pattern, so one side of the measurements are always shorter than the other. Uh, about four inches down from the top, I drew a horizontal line and measured on both sides, and then another four inches down. Ten inches down from that, four inches down from that, and then five inches down from that to the bottom. It was semi-time-consuming um, and very frustrating. As we have seen many times so far in this video, math is not my strongest suit, but it was definitely worth it and very helpful. Uh, there was a lot of measuring and erasing, but I, I really I'm glad that I did it this way. It was very helpful. Alright, so here we go. Here is our cape sleeve. Alright kids, it's mock-up time. Alright, I am obviously not in my in-law's house any longer. Uh, I am in my mother's house. And it's time to start futzing with a mock-up. So I have some muslin. I have my pattern. Let's let's try some stuff. Let's try some stuff.
I just stabbed myself. Remember kids, um, there's no seam allowance. There's no seam allowance. I forgot to plan for seam allowance. Pardon me. All right. So I don't have Taylor's chalk over here, but I do have pencils. They're new and they're good. I just bought them. Uh, so I am going to give myself some seam allowance. So now I have well, my seam allowance traced out. So let's cut this out and get to work. It's like 65 degrees today, so I'm cold, I'm like chilly inside or outside when I'm wearing my sweater, but inside it's warm. So I'm going to stitch up my mock-up and I will see you in a minute. All right, mock-up complete. Uh, somehow, even though I knew about the back being shorter than the sleeves, I still didn't manage to fix that. So I'll have to add probably another inch to my the back piece uh, and I stitched my darts on the wrong side on this one but that's fine this is why we make mock-ups um, I already know I'm gonna have to extend these because they don't meet in the back and I could add ribbon but I don't want to but other than that it fits pretty well um, Yeah. All right. Um, I guess I will see you again when I am cutting out my husband's cape. 
So this was going to be one video, but in editing it, I realized that if I was going to make it all one video, it would be like two hours long. So we're going to split it into two videos. This is part one, um, just the drafting and mock-up part, and then the second one will be the actual construction of the two real capes that my husband and I will be wearing, and I'll have like a fun little reveal bit at the end um that will be nice and aesthetic so yes uh this is gonna be part one so that you don't have to sit here for two and a half hours and watch me do the whole process in one go cool bye friends